tell us a little bit about where you're coming from, the, what your upbringing was like. Where am I coming from? I am originally from LA. Okay. Um, I was born in Taiwan, um, moved to California, for, to Los Angeles when I was five. Um, and kind of split my time in between Taiwan and LA. So I went to school out in LA, but every summer we would go back to Taiwan and do Chinese school and all of that. So I kind of have the experience of living in both countries. Um, and then when I was 17, I up and moved to New York and I've been there for my entire adult life. Wow. Uh, so why'd you move to New York? What was the dream? For school. Oh, yeah. Okay. And like, you know, I just, my entire childhood, I just wanted to get as far away from California as possible. You hated really? it? Yeah. I don't know. I like, when I say that people are like, that's so crazy because I think California for a lot of people is the dream, right? They all want to go there. Yeah, yeah. But like, you know, I've. I wanted to experience seasons, mm. you know, I wanted to see snow and all of that. But were you into like a bunch of hipster shit that also made you want to be in New York? Hipster shit. Like, I don't know. I feel like <laughs> people like in California look at New York and they're like, it's so much realer. There's like, you know, the tattoo shit is cooler. The bar scene is cooler. The fucking live music is cooler. Even if it's just more of everything. Cause everything is all close together. There's more different types of, I can say as a person who didn't grow up in either California or New York, I always thought of New York as just being this like really hardcore thing that I was just so drawn towards. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a certain grit to New York, especially in media you're watching in movies, like the big city and all of that. Like I'm from the suburbs. Mm. So like I used to take the bus like two hours into downtown LA Mm. and like get illegal piercings and stuff in (laughs) Chinatown. And I just always love that big city feel. And I went to New York for the first time, I think I was 15 and was just like enamored with how big and there's so many different types of people. Everything was so fast. And I was like, I want to move here. So I did. Dope. So uh, what what was that like though? Once you kind of got into the groove of things there? Um, crazy. So there was like, a moment where I was like, you know, the the Molly scene and all of that, <laughs> you know, 2011 when it yeah. like hit New York City. I'm just trying to figure out like what subculture you were existing <laughs> you inside out? Yeah. out there. Yeah. Oh, I mean, like people know me, I think. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I've been on the internet forever. Right. Um, And I don't know. I, I kind of touched a bunch of different areas. Um, I mean, I wasn't tattooed for a long time. So. Yeah. Now I'm like, I think people try to place me as like a tattooed person alternative or whatever, mm-hmm. but I'm very much, I think like hip hop graffiti, like that sort of, uh, space is really where hip hop graffiti guy. I'm a fake graffiti guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to claim that. Well, yeah. he was really into graffiti. So. Yeah. Wait, so you're hanging out with graffiti dudes or you're like going and catching tags and shit? Um, I was hanging out with them. Okay. I was not. You weren't partaking? No. Okay. I don't do illegal stuff. I feel like <laughs> graffiti dudes are like the grimiest dudes in the world. I agree. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. Like, if you want to sleep on a mattress on the floor, those are the guys. <laughs> like, in a kitchen. Mm. You know? <laughs> That's dope. I remember I had an ex who who we broke up, and then she immediately started dating this, like, scummy graffiti dude who had been arrested mad times, and I was like... I feel very comfortable with this. Like, I like you going this <laughs> there's route. Some, there's like an edge to them, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. the dirtier they are. I mean, I'm not like that anymore, but mm. you know. Were they, they good lays at least? Yeah. That's you know, it was almost like the dirtier they were. The well, they're better. criminals. <laughs> exactly. You know, they're like kind of living on the edge. It's like, there's got to be some good dick in there, right? I mean, I feel like girls love criminals. Yeah. You know, at least of a certain age, and then you kind of age out of it. Well, because you, know? you guys all watch serial killer documentaries and oh stuff. My God. So like, you nope. do too. Yeah, every woman. <laughs> it is like, yeah, mostly a female audience. So like, graffiti dudes are like a safe version of that. Like they're fucking shit up, but they're not hurting anybody really. Yeah, that's true. I stay maybe, maybe there's a link crime. there. You do. Yeah. What do you think it is inside of you that makes you like that? I don't know. I've always been really into that. Like when I was younger, I was really into serial killer, like learning about serial killers, like reading about them. Mm. And now I'm just like, wow, if I really wanted to hide a body, I think I would be pretty good at it. Oh, shit. Wow. I think it's just fascinating. But yeah, I don't know what it like. I would would like to know what it is that makes women more drawn to it. But I feel like maybe it's just like a safety mechanism. Like the more you learn about what serial killers have done to, to make things happen, you know how like, to evade them. Yes, you know how to protect yourself. Is it that? Or is it that you're attracted to this version of masculinity that isn't really allowed to exist in our society? I Which think is you're what? sick and twisted. Killing, killing women? <laughs> I, guess, I, don't know. I think you're fucked. No. 
<laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so what had to happen in order for you to eventually start considering being a sex worker? Like, I'm sure that there were a procession of events that kind of led to this, right? Yeah. So I went to NYU um, and then I That's did a year begins. there. Yeah. <laughs> that was my dream school, by the way. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. It was my dream as well. Um, I was there for a year and basically just had like a bad experience where I had never gone to private school. So I had envisioned private school to be this like pinnacle of education. And that wasn't really how I was being treated. And I was like, this place is way too expensive to be treated like this. So I dropped out. And for a year, I was like, let me just work. And, you know, and that's when I got in that kind of crowd, like, you know, going to afters until like 11 a.m. sort of oh crazy party girl vibe. Um, and then I realized very quickly, it's very hard when you're 18 years old and you have no college degree to make rent in New York mm, City. I can imagine. Yeah. So then I um, got into sugaring. Um, Whoa. and that was the time where seeking arrangements had just started. Really? Okay. Like it was the first year of seeking arrangements. So it was kind of like the wild, wild west at that time. Um, and so that was kind of my first foray. Um, and then tell you gotta tell us what this was like though. Yeah. Like, do you have like one dude or you have like a handful of dudes or are you just kind of meeting new dudes all the time? On I there? was like, meeting new guys all the time. Really? So um, you had a roster. Yeah. And, you know, I was hustling. Really? Um, and, you know, I then met a guy and, um, you know, separate from all of that. And then we dated for seven years. And so mm -hmm. I obviously got off of that and kind of went back to school, did the straight and narrow. Um, and I had like a marketing gig, like a, at a really big company for a long time. Um so you tried the the straight and narrow life after a period of indiscretion. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. So for like five years. Yeah, five years. I worked um doing digital marketing for a multi billion dollar beverage company. Wow. <laughs> she won't say what it is, but yeah. Um. But yeah, I I fully had a corporate career and everything. And at a certain point, I just decided like, hey, I think I don't want to work for someone else anymore. Mm. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I started freelance doing marketing. And then um, I had a friend who was just like, hey, like you used to sugar, right? Like, why don't you do that again? So I was like, okay, like now this time I'm in my mid-20s. And is this after you and the 